Hi everyone, welcome to A Beer with Brad, episode two. Last month I started a new photography video series where I have a beer and discuss photography with you. Um, today is episode two and I'm gonna discuss my camera gear. The first three episodes are all common questions I get at art fairs. Every summer I do outdoor art fairs and I get three really common questions. Uh, last month I did, uh, how'd you get into photography? This month I'm going over what camera do you use? And next month I'm gonna talk about, is that Photoshopped? Um, which I think is a loaded question, but we'll get to that next month. Uh, today my beer is Rubber Floaties by Cross Strain Brewing Company. Uh, Cross Strain is here in the uh, greater Omaha area, technically La Vista, but uh, not too far down the road from here. Uh, Cross Strain is one of my favorite, but I should say that you know all the all the breweries in Omaha, or basically any brewery I've ever been to, for the most part, does some beer well. Um, every brewery kind of has their you know their style that they're known for, and to Cross Strain, in my opinion. Um, is really known for their IPAs. They, you know, they do a lot of good sours. They do a lot of good dark beers. But in my opinion, it's the, the IPAs. Um, this one, Rubber Floaties, is a uh, hazy IPA with coconut in it. I am not a, a coconut fan. I don't like coconut really at all on anything. And the brewers, or not the brewers, but the the guys from the brewery said this has a ridiculous amount of coconut in it. And I really like this beer, so it must be doing something right. So. Rubber Floaties by Cross Strain. It's a great hazy IPA. Um, and then I got a lot of comments in the in the first video that I didn't talk about the beer enough and I did not drink enough of the beer. So tonight I'm gonna do better to drink a little more of the beer and uh, hopefully I talked about it a little bit more. But Cross Strain um, is a great brewery. Been around about three years and uh, they are always coming out with new things. And they have a lot of similar beers with different variations on the recipe, which is really cool because you can always go down there and try something similar yet different. So it keeps you, keeps you going back for more. It's a great beer though. So tonight I want to talk about my camera gear. Um, I don't, let's we'll start with the, some of this camera gear back here. This is all the old stuff. On the table, during my first video, I had a Graflex camera sitting there, it was in a big box. And the Graflex camera belonged to my great grandpa on my dad's side. Uh, a few years ago, I had a relative, one of my dad's aunts sent the camera to me and said that it was my great grandpa's camera and that she thought I should have it. But the cool thing besides getting the camera was, it also came with his press pass dated 1938. So I have, my own press passes from you know 2007 through now, which are cool, but 1938 is awesome, and have the camera that went with it from 1938 is, is super cool. So love that I have that. Um, I have a Minolta that was sitting on the table next to, and then right next to it's a Yashica. These are my cameras from college. Uh, I think one of them still works fine. The other one needs a light, or one of them the light meter went bad, so probably out of commission. Uh, this Canon. 35 millimeter was my grandpa's camera on my mom's side, so my mom's dad. So I have cameras from both sides of the family, which is cool. And then next to it is a Rolio cord um, that came from a family friend from my wife's family. And actually the Rolio cord, if I was gonna fire up any of them, would probably be the one I would use. Uh, the Graflex is cool. I really wish I could use it, but I don't think that I could get film for that anymore. It was kind of an odd size. While it's kind of a large format camera, it doesn't have the typical, it, it doesn't have the, the, you know, the four by five large format or eight by 10 film. So can't use that, I don't believe. Then uh, the Royal Code just cool. It takes medium format film, so I can get that. Uh, I could use the 35 millimeters, but all these, I want to use them. I just don't have the time. So one of these days I'm going to get out and play with them and and uh, I'll make a video when I do that for sure. Uh, before we get to today's gear, the stuff I use now, I just wanna say I'm really not a gear guy. I am not out there always looking at the next new camera coming out. I'm not reading the specs. I'm not you know, wanting this lens and that lens. I buy a camera and I use it and I use it and I use it. And when I kind of think that it's so far behind the times that I need to upgrade or it's really getting worn out, I'll upgrade, but I'm not always out there. I don't always want new cameras. I don't want, and I'm sure the camera stores and camera makers don't want to hear that. But you know, to me, it's the cameras 
the tool, but the best part of the art is just getting out there and doing it. And, you know, if I have extra money, I could go buy a lens or I could go take a photography trip for the week. I'll probably go take the photography trip for the week unless my, you know, unless my camera's wearing out and I need a new one. So, uh, I love getting out there. I love exploring. I just love spending time with the camera and not, you know, out there trying to find the next best thing. So with that said, um, my first digital camera was a Canon, uh, rebel, it was eight megapixel rebel. Uh, I bought that in 2006. It was a great camera. I can still make, and I still do occasionally make a 36 inch wide print from that camera. You know, most of those pictures I shot on JPEG mode and not raw. And, uh, you know, I have a, I have a 36 inch, inch JPEG picture that I printed out at my work, which it looks great. So uh, it's the technology was, is, is so much better now, but I could still get good pictures with what I had back then. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of one of the things that I don't really feel like I need to always upgrade because the cameras are good and just getting a little bit much better is not going to make a huge difference in the long run to me. Not for the type of photography I feel like I do. Um, I sold the Rebel and I bought the Canon 5D, the original 5D Mark I. Uh, I wish I would have kept that Rebel, you know, at the time I was trying to get every penny I had together to get this camera because... Uh, it was a big upgrade for me, uh, and the the 5D Mark One I, I had from 2008, about 2008, and, and uh, kept it through 2013. I still have it, still use it. Batteries are pretty worthless, so I don't use it a lot. Um, usually, I bring it along as a backup in case I have to. Um, I can't take too many pictures before I have to charge the batteries and I could get new batteries too. I just don't because, you know, it's kind of like the third stringer at this point. Um, in 2013, I upgraded to the 5D Mark III, which is not sitting here on the table because it's actually recording this video. The 5D Mark III has been a great camera. I mean, it's been my workhorse and I've used it and used it and used it for everything since 2013 until basically March of 2021. So. It's been a great long-term camera. I've made so many cool pictures. I've, you go around town and you know, there's a couple car dealerships, there's a sporting goods store, uh, there's a bar, there's an apartment. There's just several places where you can see pictures from that 5D3 that are printed out and put as wallpapers that are, you know, 20, 25 feet wide. And they just, they look great. It's been a great camera. Uh, after the 5D3, finally this year, I upgraded to the EOS R, which is the new Canon mirrorless camera. Um, the mirrorless has been kind of a game changer with digital photography. Uh, it, you know, in the end, it's still a, a digital image, but there's a lot of cool new features on this. And, the, you know, the resolution is obviously higher. Every new camera has higher resolution. So the original uh, 5D was 12 megapixel. The 5D Mark III I'm recording this on it was 22 or 24 megapixel. I think 24. And then the EOS R is 45 megapixel. Um, so then the new EOS R is a mirrorless camera. Um, you know, the old picture the old cameras you know the picture came in through the lens and then your viewfinder was a mirror up to there this one is a digital eyepiece so it's almost like a uh, miniature little screen inside the eyepiece the coolest thing about that is the amount of information they can display in the eyepiece you know before i had a light meter in there and that was cool um but this now has a histogram in there and the histogram is kind of like a uh, a, a bar graph of your uh, lights and darks and seeing that graph in there the histogram gives you so much more information especially when you're shooting in a high dynamic situation you know high dynamic range where you get a lot of light and a lot of darks and you want to push your exposure to one end or the other that histogram is awesome i love having that especially you know if you're doing baseball where you're like focused on the infield and then the guy hits it you know and it's shady and then the guy hits the ball in the outfield and it's sunny or if you're out uh, doing wildlife and you have birds flying across the scene and the you know the lights change a lot, seeing that histogram change as you're you know working with the image is really awesome. Uh, I love the histogram. Light meter's cool, but the histogram just shows much, so much more detail. So uh, the other cool thing about the mirrorless is it has a completely silent shutter. Um, it at, it'll shoot 20 pictures per second and not make a single noise. 
which if you're out in like a photography blind doing the sandhill cranes or whatnot and you know if you're not in a, a photography specific blind if you're just in a regular blind you're not allowed to shoot on rapid fire well i can shoot 20 pictures in a second or you know 100 pictures in five seconds and no one around me will even know i push the button because it'll be dead silent it'll snap off all those pictures which is awesome for wildlife uh, so that's been been a cool upgrade um, then the other thing i like about the new mirrorless lenses i still use all my old l lenses but the new mirrorless lenses uh have a, a control ring and since i'm using the old lenses i have to have this adapter and the adapter also has the control ring and the control ring is just a, a dial basically that you can program to do whatever you want uh, i myself have it programmed to do the iso and the best thing about the iso is basically when you're taking a photo there's three components to your your shutter you got your shutter speed your aperture and your iso and so you've always had your uh, shutter speed here with your index finger and then back here with your thumb on the wheel you've had uh, your aperture well before where you had to go into a menu to change your iso now you have it right here on a ring so you have all three controls at your fingertips without going to any menus you again once again sports wildlife whatnot when you're you need to change some of those things fast especially sports and wildlife where you don't want to go much lower with your shutter and you can't really go any lower with your with your aperture being able to change that iso bump it up a couple spots real quick has been it's been fantastic i mean that's just it's a game changer right there so i really like that it's been a great camera i haven't used it too much i've only had it about five weeks i took it on my crane trip i shot a couple um things around town with it funny thing is last weekend if you follow me on social media i posted a brand new skyline photo it was actually shot with the old 5d3 i forgot to change out the camera that was in my camera bag ran out the door sun was setting took the 5d3 um shot with that and then the next night there's a broncos hamburger restaurant that i shot uh and that was with the new eos r so both still i mean they're still great cameras the thing with shooting with 5d3 over the eos r when i'm doing sports these are 45 megapixels are huge files so sometimes it's still nice to use the 5d3 and the other thing when i'm shooting sports i beat this stuff up i mean i'm horrible with my camera gear when i'm shooting sports so kind of still leaning towards shooting it with the 5d3 since it's old and it's been shooting sports for eight years and keep the eos r more pristine for landscapes and architecture uh moving over to my lenses um this is my 7200 f2.8 this has been a workhorse for me this is a great lens uh the front element is pretty good still there is one little scratch in there but don't i don't ever notice that one it's been uh great for i use it for hockey i use it for basketball i use it for when i'm shooting tighter scenes and landscapes and then uh some architecture maybe around town some skyline stuff maybe around town if i want a tighter skyline but this has been a great lens it's worked so well f2.8 has image stabilization i don't turn the image stabilization on pretty much ever uh, behind that is the 400 28 the canon 400 28 awesome lens but this old one weighs a ton uh, if you're out shooting birds all weekend you feel like when you get home that you've been at the gym because this thing weighs a ton and and you feel it ah so pretty much now this is my baseball lens that's about the only thing if i did football which i haven't done in a few years i would probably use it for football uh, it's great on a, a monopod uh, to take some of that weight off you and they have newer versions of this lens that weigh way less the only problem with those lenses they about cost as much as your car so uh great lens weighs a ton don't use it as much as i used to because now i have this uh, sigma 150 to 600 uh, this has been great for wildlife um, i still use this for wildlife right at sunrise and sunset because it w uh, lets in a lot more light uh, but this 600 has been awesome it makes great images weighs it weighs way less uh, it's a really affordable lens too um, next i have my wide angle lens which is the canon 16 to 35 f2.8 um, been a great lens this is usually the one that's just hanging out on my camera when it's in my bag or if i'm carrying it around um, use this for landscapes architecture uh, some of my stadium panoramics pretty much everything it's a versatile lens next to it is my 24 to 70 which is kind of my medium range lens um, 
this is great. You know, the number one thing, this is the lens I recommend if you do aerials from a helicopter. This is, when I do my aerials, this is always the lens that's on there. Um, and then it's also handy for landscapes. Uh, you know, there's some scenes that look good super wide, but there's a lot of them that look good, more of a medium or, or a longer range. So, uh, I also have a 50 millimeter, uh, you know, the plastic cheapo 50 millimeter 1.8, the, the lens that everyone needs, supposedly, I was told when I bought it. Um, that's the one that's actually recording this video today. I hardly ever use it, but it's great that I have it because then I could use it for this video and still show all the lenses I normally use on a regular basis. So Canon 50 millimeter 1.8, uh, it is good for stars. Um, if I did portraits, which I don't, it'd probably be good for portraits. Um, you can do some close up stuff where you really blur out the back, but uh, I don't really use it much. Uh, I also have a couple Canon teleconverters, the 2X, the 1.4. I don't really use those much. Um, this original Canon 400, they don't work well with that. I'm told they work awesome with the new one, but with the original, the images aren't that sharp. Um, the, I, I, I kind of bag on this a little bit, you know, but upgrading this lens to the new one, and the new one's like $13,000. So I just, I don't see the need upgrading this. I use it for what I need it for and the rest I use for this. If I were to stick this 2X on here, you're going to be, um, lose two stops. So you're almost to this lens anyways. So why not use the 600, which is light, cheaper, and gets really good images instead of, going this route and having a ton of weight and not get what you're happy with. So, uh, that's pretty much it for the lenses. As far as the video stuff goes, when I first started shooting videos, I was like, oh, they got to be shot with a, with a DSLR camera, which is, you know, the, the mirror cameras. And it was like lugging around a whole nether camera setup. And I'm a photographer. I'm there to take pictures and the video is just something I do on the side for fun. Man, that's tasty. Um, so after shooting a few videos, and some of those videos never hit the, I never did anything with them. They're sitting on my hard drive where they'll probably be forever. And the thing was, was sometimes I felt like it was too much work to set up the DSLR with an external microphone and whatnot. So I, you know, sometimes if I was, if there's a really cool scene, I wanted to be there, I wanted to get pictures of it, I kind of let the video part go. Or, you know, if if I had time, I would use that, but then I wouldn't focus on the pictures and it just, it never seemed to work out very well for me. So uh, a few years ago, the Union Pacific sent their big boy steam locomotive to town and I made a whole video, it's on my YouTube channel, um, with an iPhone 7, this is the 10, but at the time it was the iPhone 7 with the the standard iPhone microphone. And I can go out there in the other room and watch it on a 55 inch TV and it is totally clear, it is a great video and the sound is fine. And so then it started getting me thinking like, why do I need to worry about all this extra video stuff when I'm there to take pictures, I'm a photographer, I don't need to be there with all this extra video stuff. So um, I was shot a little bit more with the with the iPhone and I've also bought this uh, GoPro Hero uh, 8. And you know, there's a, a new video on my YouTube, well not new, but a month old video on my YouTube channel that is, is a combination of both of these. Um, it's a helicopter, it says helicopter time. And I kind of bounce back and forth between these two. Other than one time when this kind of acted up a little bit with the focus, it kind of bounced in and out. It's pretty much seamless between the two. Uh, there's also a video hiking, snow hiking the Los Hills that was all shot on the GoPro. And I think that one came out really good. And, uh, you know, other than, I guess maybe some low light situations that I haven't really run into, I don't know why I wouldn't really want to go back to using a DSLR to photograph, uh, video or to shoot videos. So, uh, the iPhone and the uh, GoPro are pretty much my two go-to cameras now. Obviously I'm recording this video in here on, on the DSLR and I'll probably do most of these future studio videos on this one just because it has the flip out monitor and I don't need to have a secondary TV down there to see what I'm doing. So uh, other than that, I have um, a Rode video um, microphone 
that it's the big microphone, more of a directional microphone, it has a dead cat on it. Uh, I have the video uh, or the Rode um, wireless mini, which has been great. You know, I have a tiny little microphone on me with a transmitter in my pocket and there's one on the camera. And that's been good for a lot of situations. It also hooks up, so my GoPro has the media mod, which has the shotgun microphone on here. And it also has a place so I can actually slide, you know, this is obviously the wrong end of it but I can slide you know, the other end into my camera, plug it right in, and so this is kind of a wireless setup. Um, and then it also has the built-in mic, which has been great. And other than that, I have a few filters. I use a, a polarizing filter on some kind of shiny objects, leaves in the fall, water, waterfalls. I have some neutral density filters that uh, Barely get broken out usually for waterfalls in kind of bright situations, but I'm not really big on the waterfall or on the waterfalls I'm big. On, I like waterfalls. I'm not big on the filters I just feel like once you put them on you're kind of stuck with with the results But a lot of those filters except for the polarizer you can really replicate in Post-processing these days and so you know, it's kind of one of those things where I'd rather keep the the fil the the photo more neutral to what the camera actually saw and worry about applying the filters after the fact. Um, and then I got some miscellaneous uh, adapters, parts, pieces to do different things with the camera, the tripod, the tripod mounts. Uh, most of the time my camera's just on a Monfrotto tripod uh, with a ball head on it. And then I have a, a camera bag that I use from Think Tank, which has been great. It's held up awesome. And uh, that's pretty much the the end of my gear. I, I don't, don't know what else to say about it. Uh, like I said, I'm not really into the gear. To me, the, the gear is the tool that I use to get the job done, to make the picture. Um, I'd rather be out investing my time and money into me as a photographer and out learning and not, not spending it all on worrying about the gear that I have. So... Uh, you know, I know people have tons of questions about camera gear and I'm I'm always available to ask questions, you know, shoot me an email um, Put them down in the comments below this video or you can message me on social media. I'm gonna tell you the one social media uh, Instagram I am not good at responding to questions on Instagram and that's because I don't know why but I just never seem to see the notification that I have a new message um, but yeah, Twitter Facebook email or in the comments on YouTube, I'll respond to those. Um, I'll, I'm always up for answering questions and I'm always out there if anyone has any questions to answer or to ask of me. Um, I think that's gonna probably do it for today. Um, you know, I, I know people always ask about the camera gear and camera lenses and and I think I hopefully covered it all. Uh, I'm not the, the most expert on camera gear. I know how to make it do what I want it to do, but I know there's a lot more that I don't know. So I know, and if you are wanting to buy a camera, go out to Rockford Camera here. If you're in Omaha, go out to Rockford Camera. They have a great staff. Uh, they can always ask, you know, answer your questions. And if they can't, one of the other employees can. You know, when I was buying this, I went out and I started asking too many questions. They ended up finding me a different person to help me, uh, which is totally fine. I'd rather get the right answer than, than not. Uh, so, again, thanks for tuning in. Uh, next month, we're going to talk about is that photoshopped, which is a loaded question, I think, but uh, one I'm happy to talk about. So. Hope everyone enjoyed this and uh, I had fun doing it. Can't wait to see you on episode three. Have a good evening.